Hi guys, it's John here, and this is a benchmark comparison between the Galaxy S22 Ultra and the Galaxy S23 Ultra. Now you'll notice a new addition or a reappearance here from our good friend, the Exynos 2200. So we're going to be bringing this back into the mix for this test on Android One UI 6.0 as they have now or had the update, so let's see how they compare. Is it worth upgrading to the S23 Ultra or do you just stick with your S22 Ultra? Let's find out in this benchmark test. So you can see here, I've got all the screens set to 80% brightness. They are set at 2K resolution. We have the floating temperature widget here showing the system temperature and they were all charged up to 100%. But let's get into our Geekbench 6 test here and we'll see what their averages are after three tests. Okay, so there's some very interesting results here in the CPU benchmark. And we'll start off with the Exynos 2200 because it's had the biggest improvement here. So the last test I did with this was in January 2023, and we can see a massive increase here on the single core. Before we were getting an average of about 1,100 points, but now we're getting 1,600 on average, which is nearly a 40% increase compared to last year. So that's a massive improvement there for the Exynos 2200. A smaller increase for the mod core of about 8%, nearly 9%, which is still really nice to see, obviously. And this does show what difference a year can make with updates and improvements. So moving on to the Snapdragon variant, and we can see we have had improvement as well. 12.5% on the single core, which is really, really nice to see. Always keeping cooler still than the Exynos 2200, which was around 27, 28 throughout most of the test. Nothing really on the multi-core improved there since Android 13, but yeah, nice to see that single core increase there for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Moving on to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 now on the S23 Ultra. Nothing really on the single core compared to last month, but we did get a nice 3% increase on the mod core score. So overall, really nice results there for all three phones. But we'll move on to the GPU test now and we'll see how they compare there. Okay, so the GPU test is just finished and we can see here, there's only been a very small increase on the 2200 here since last year, just over 1%, so nothing really too exciting there with the GPU result. But it is interesting to see how close this is to the S23 Ultra. There's only about 500 points difference in this test. Quite surprising to see that the 2200 can still keep up when it comes to GPU tests. Battery wise, we're down to 85%, 88% and 91%. Obviously these phones are a bit older, so it's to be expected that they will run down quicker. But let's move on now to our Antutu test and we'll see how they compare here. So we can see again that the Exynos 2200 has had a massive increase here in its score from last year. We're up about 22.5% compared to what we were getting last January. Last January we were seeing an average of 880,000, now we're well over 100, which isn't too far off the 8 Gen 1 here with 113,000. So we do get a nice increase of 3.5% here on the 8 Gen 1 and a small decrease of 2% here on the 8 Gen 2. See so here, 35 degrees, 33 and 31. So as always, the 2200 is a bit warmer. Battery wise, 77, 80 and 84. Okay, so we're gonna do the stress test now on Antutu. Okay, so the stress test just finished and we can see here some interesting results. We'll just quickly start off with the S23 Ultra here because it's pretty much perfect. You can see here we've got some really great averages on CPU performance throughout the whole of the test, all the way up to the end and the CPU cores are clocked at their respective speeds as they should be. Looking at the S22 Ultra 8 Gen 1, it's not such a bright picture here. We can see averaging around 65 to 70% throughout the most of the test CPU performance wise and the cores dropping around everywhere, which we have seen with the 8 Gen 1 previously, but it is looking a bit messy here on the 8 Gen 1. Now going to the 2200 here, we can see speeds not looking amazing here, down at about 1.8, 1.9 gigahertz for the main core. And that means the performance here is suffering because of that, sticking at around 65 to 70% throughout the most of the test, slowly dropping down there towards the end. HN1 here, you can see running at about 2.5, 2.6 gigahertz for most of the test. So yeah, the 2200 is still running with lower clock speeds. Battery wise, 68, 71 and 74. So let's move on to our 3D mark tests now and we'll see how they compare there. So the Wildlife Extreme's just finished and no improvements here at all for the 2200. Similar story for the S22 Ultra 8 Gen 1. We've just got a slightly higher best loop compared to our previous test, but the S23 Ultra has actually had an improvement on both the best, the lowest and its stability. So a great improvement there 
for the S23 Ultra. Battery wise, we're down to 57, 59, and 61. Temperature wise, HN2 did get quite a bit warmer, 42 degrees compared to 40 and 38. So let's move on to the Slingshot Extreme and we'll see how they do here. Okay, so not quite so good results here for the Slingshot Stream on any of the phones, actually. So we've had a decrease of about 16.5% on the Exynos 2200 compared to last January. Near enough, no difference here on the S22 Ultra 8 Gen 1. And on the S23 Ultra, we've had a decrease of about 8%. So not sure what's happened there, but it is not looking good in the Slingshot Extreme test. Okay, so what I'll do, if I can remember, at the end of the test is move on to the Solar Bay test. I'll do this afterwards just so we can check the battery life difference between the lot because the S22 Ultra HN1 does not support the Sony test so we'll come back to that afterwards. We'll just move on to the browser bench and we'll see how they compare here then we'll move back to the Sony Bay test. Okay so Jetstream 2 has just finished and we can see a nice increase here for the S22 Ultra compared to the previous Jetstream 2. Nothing really to talk about on the S23 Ultra and a score of 92 for the Exynos 2200. Now, I haven't tested this with Jetstream before, so this is our first score, so there's nothing to compare it with. But obviously, you can see here, the browsing experience, through Chrome at least, would be a lot slower on the S22 Ultra with the Exynos 2200. Whether you'd actually notice that or not is another question, but those are the results. Okay, so I'm now gonna move on to the Solar Bay test. We'll just do a single one to start with and see how we'd get on with this. This is gonna be testing the Vulcan graphics, which obviously the HN1 doesn't have, and it's going to test ray tracing, which is what the Exynos 2200 was all about when it first released. So let's see how they compare here, and we'll come back with the final results. Okay, so the Solar Bay has just finished, and we can see here a score of 4003 for the Exynos 2200, and a score of 5543 for the HN2 in the S23 Ultra. So, 1,500 points difference here, but interesting nonetheless, a phone that's nearly two years old now, not massively behind the current flagship. See here, average frame per second, 15 versus 21, and then the various sections here, 18 versus 23, 15 versus 21, and 12 versus 18. So very interesting scores there, and the first time we've done this Solar Bay test. So that is the end of the benchmark for January 2024. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you want me to keep the Exynos 2200 in these tests. Obviously we've got the S24 coming out very soon, so it's gonna be interesting to compare a few generations together and see how they do throughout 2024. Hope this was useful. If it was, please do like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. Don't forget to leave any comments you have down below and I'll see you in the next video.